Hello my besties, how are you? Welcome to my DIY channel where we do a lot of fun projects on the budget. If you like to do that as well, please go ahead, hit the little red button, subscribe to my channel and automatically become my bestie. That means we are in touch and you never miss any of my videos and I share all my fun DIYs with you, okay? <laughs> in today's video, I'm so excited to bring to you an anchor reef. How cool is that? I got it at a Dollar Tree. But don't worry if you're not able to find it. I will also make a beautiful nautical reef on the round form as well, okay? So let's get started. So for the first DIY, we are going to use the anchor reef form. And here's the barcode if you like to look it up online. You might have seen it already if you watched my starfish reef tutorial. There's a whole summer shopping haul there. And I hear more stores are getting this stuff now, so fingers crossed that my besties will be able to find these new forms. We are going to cover the anchor with the chunky yarn, and you can get it at Walmart. Cut off a piece of about 10 feet, so it's gonna be easier to manage. And you're going to attach one end at the bill of the anchor, just fold it under, and use the rails to thread your yarn over and under, over and under, and back and forth, just like so. It's very easy, it just takes a little bit of time. <laughs> and you know, it's actually relaxing to do. Uh, the yarn is soft and very easy to work with. I find it even easier and uh, faster than the nautical rope, actually. You had seen me do the cross weave, came out beautiful, uh, but I have to tell you the, the yarn is easier. It's lighter and it's just softer. I recommend you try it if you haven't done it yet. All right, the first section is filling in. I just need to squeeze in a little bit more there to make sure the rails are not showing. All right, so the palm is done and I'm moving over to the next section and continue doing the same thing over and under, over and under. It's all repetitive, so I'm just going to go fast until the next section. All right, so the second section is done. You see the sidebar there? We just continue weaving over and under, filling in the third section now. And as the piece of yarn is getting shorter, my weaving goes faster. All right, so the third section is almost full. Let me see if I can squeeze in one more. Just push the yarn back and squeeze in one more up and down across. All right, so we got three sections done. Look how cute. I'm going to skip the crown, cut off some extra yarn, and now start again on the other side at the bill again. Just fold under the piece of yarn. If you like, you can just glue it there. Um, I usually glue later on, but you could do it, whatever makes it comfortable for you. Hold it with your thumb and start weaving. It will stay in place. And you continue weaving, mirror exactly what you did on the other side. Thank you. 
So I cut just a bit too short and I'm missing a little bit of yarn here. So first I'm going to attach it and then cut another piece to completely fill in that third section on the other side. And as I'm waiting for the glue to dry, I might as well finish off the other ends as well. So I'm just chopping the excess yarn that was there, adding a dab of hot glue. I just uh, glue it to the form, you know. You see how little I'm missing here? <laughs> But that might happen to you as well, so this is what you're going to do. Just fold over a piece of yarn, weave over, under, over, under, hold that with your thumb. And you know, as you fill in the whole section, you are going to glue in those ends down to the form. Just like so, and then cut off the excess yarn. and might as well take care of any other ends that you haven't done yet. All right, so we got the two arms done and now right here at the center, huh? That's a challenge. <laughs> and let's see, one thing at a time. I guess over here, how is this part called? Looking at some naval guides, it looks like we reached the crown area. <laughs> so we're going to add some glue over there at the bottom and just weave over. There's only one bar there. Let me just chop that yarn off. And we are going to weave in that little section there just over and under. You know, there's that bar in there in the middle, just one. And I'm sorry, it's hard to see from this angle, but we're doing exact same thing like we did before. And I wish they just gave us an extra bar there, would make things so much easier, but no. I wonder who's designing these forms and what they're thinking. <laughs> they should ask us DIYers for some advice, I think. <laughs> No disrespect or anything, just, you know, I like to make things easy. <laughs> All right, so we fill it in over there, squeezing in one more. And we are going to just cut off that excess yarn in the back and glue it there. All right, moving on to the top now, and I guess we are going to work on the part called stock. Yes, <laughs> let's attach the yarn to the corner of one of the stocks. And we continue weaving across that section. And since my yarn is slipping over here, I'm just going to add a dab of hot glue on the other corner as well, so it stays in place and makes my weaving easier.
Okay, so I reached the sidebar and I might as well continue weaving because I have just a little bit of rope left. So I'm going to do it all the way to the center. All right, let's glue that end in the back. All right, one stack is done. Now the other one. <laughs> you see, we're learning. We're learning so much here, right? <laughs> Yay! <laughs> we got the whole stack done. And now what we left with is the shank. <laughs> now the challenging part. Even my Tweety Bird is confused. She's looking at this and it's like, how are we going to go about that? Is that what you're thinking, Tweety? You better don't eat any fibers. Okay, we're going to start off with the ring because that's the easy part. Again, cut some yarn. It's always a guesswork how much you're going to use, you know? And just attach some over there on the side. And this is going to be the easiest part of the reef. All you have to do is weave in and out through that hole. You see? Real easy. Yay, look how cute that looks. So we have the yarn left over. So we are just going to continue weaving across now. Over and under, over and under, just like so. There's a little sidebar. Uh, so we are going to squeeze in our yarn over there just a little bit more to make sure it's all filled in and we don't have a space left over. All right, so this section is done. Look how cute. And since I have a little bit of yarn left over, I might as well continue across, you know, just weaving over and under until the yarn ends. And then I'm going to glue it in the back. All right, so let's cut some more yarn and continue with that shank. <laughs> And you know how it is in the beginning when you cut a lot of yarn? It's just a lot to pull through. But the pr whole process is very easy, just over and under, until you reach that center over there, okay? Right, so once you fill in that section and you reach the center, there's basically a hole over there because there's no sidebar where the stack is, right? So what are we going to do actually? I decide to crisscross my yarn just like that. Couple times in this direction, couple times in the other direction. And you know what? That chunky yarn is so forgiving. <laughs> it works. <laughs> So I find that method to be the easiest, you know, since there's no sidebars in there. And then once you fill in that stack, the center, you can just continue weaving over and under just how you did before. You see? 
So that's how we conquer that challenge. <laughs> All right, we're almost done with that section. Just continue weaving all the way across down to the bottom until you reach that hole. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> we completed the shank! <laughs> well, almost, except that hole. <laughs> like I said, there's no sidebars there, just soft yarn. So what we are going to do actually is separate the yarn, make like a little opening there, and thread your yarn through and across and over and under, just to cover up that hole. What do you think? I think it's pretty good, right? Like I said, that chunky yarn is very forgiving, very easy to work with. I'm just cutting off the excess and gluing over there in the back. And we are done! <laughs> so exciting! Make sure you glue in any loose ends. And if you see your yarn separating anywhere, exposing the wire form, you know, just add a dab glue there. Glue it together and See, just fix it up, fluff it up, and look looks so pretty, right? you didn't think that that was the end of our naval training there. <laughs> we still have to tie a rope around our anchor. So let's start over here on the side. We are going to wrap the rope three times around the fluke. All right, and we got to reinforce it with glue so the rope stays there. And then we are going to run the rope across the crown and again, attach it with some hot glue so it stays in that position there. And then across the shank, around and around and around we go. <laughs> That's a, you know, that's a real naval training that you won't get that at the academy. <laughs> and then through the ring. Ta-da! Now that's not the end of it, my bestie. We have to tie a knot or make it look like the knot is tied there. You know what I mean? Just uh, see how much rope you have left. Like make a nice loop for yourself to hang the wreath. And then... Tie it around there three times and secure it with hot glue. This was a test run just to make sure I have enough rope for what I'm doing. Uh, I let it loose to make sure I glue every step of the way, you know, every segment is nice and secure there.
All right, does that look like one professionally tied anchor or what? <laughs> if you like, you can stop here. Or if you like me, you might want to add a couple things. You can decorate your anchor with a cute sign or some seashells, whatever you have on hand. I have this cute little Jersey Shore plate that I got at Christmas Tree Shop. It was just 69 cents. I'm going to embellish it a little bit with the nautical rope and I'll use a pipe cleaner to attach it to the anchor. I also found these cute little seahorses at the Dollar Tree. I think I'm just gonna attach one on the side over here. Feel free to stop at any point. You know me, I like to play around. <laughs> so I'm just trying to see what I can come up with here. I think it gets a little bit too busy for me with the seashells here. In the end, I decide to go with the dark seashells, the ones I found at the Jersey Shore. And I'm going just to highlight the edges, just something different like that. Why not? You know, I like different. And here's the look at the final result. Make sure you give me those little seashells emojis if you like what you see. For the next reef, we are going to use the round reef form. And the 10 inch wide deco mesh, uh, this one is from Hobby Lobby Christmas time, but it's blue like ocean waves, so it's perfect. <laughs> we are going to cut it in pieces 10 by 20. You are going to have exactly 18 pieces, which is perfect for this reef. Next, we are going to tie the pipe cleaners to the reef form. And these are actually half the size, but it works out just fine. First, we are going to tie a pipe cleaner to the two inner rails, just like this. And then we are going to tie two pipe cleaners to the two outer rails, just like so. As you know, there are six sections in a reef. We will have a total of 18 pipe cleaners. And now we are going to make the craffles. Open up your deco mesh, curl up one end three times, clip it, turn it around, curl up the other end, walk your fingers across, pinch, and you got a craffle. Just tie it down to the reef form. Twist tie it a couple times. Let's make some more craffles. Open it up. Curl up one end, clip it, turn it around, curl up the other end, walk your fingers across, pinch, and tie down your cruffle. <laughs> I like to attach one to the inner, one to the outer rails, but there's no rhyme or reason here, guys. Just attach them all around the reef, and it's going to fill in beautifully. All right, and we got 18 craffles done. Look at that. Does it remind you a little bit of the ocean waves? I think so. It's going to go perfectly with this beautiful sign that I got at a Dollar Tree. We are going to reinforce it in the back with popsicle sticks so it's nice and sturdy. And we are going to attach a couple pipe cleaners at the top and bottom. 
to create ties to attach the sign to the reef. But first we are going to cut up some ribbons and today we are using all Dollar Tree ribbons. We cut them in 12 inches long pieces, cut the fishtails and we are going to layer the pattern ribbon on top of the plain burlap ribbon, fold it in half to find a midpoint, pinch it, create like a v-shape out of your ribbon and tie it on top of your craffles all around the reef using the outer pipe cleaners, okay? The outer rail pipe cleaners. And we are going to alternate the colors. We have the white, so now we are going to do the red on top of the burlap, fold it in half, pinch it, make a V-shape and tie it down. And these uh, half pipe cleaners are a little bit harder to find, a little bit harder to work with. I have to tell you, I like the long pipe cleaners better. But the good thing about these is that you don't have to trim them down because there's basically nothing left here. <laughs> and you go all around the reef, okay? All right, so we got 12 sets of ribbons all around the reef. As you can see, they really fill in beautifully. And now we can add our sign and any embellishments. I found a piece of net that I like to use and some seashells. I'm going to attach the net across the reef using a pipe cleaner, just tying at the top there and stretching and attaching again at the bottom. Next, we are going to add our sign in the center. Um, maybe we want to pull out that net a little bit more to the side so it's more visible, just like that. And we are going to thread the pipe cleaners through the deco mesh all the way down to the reef form and attach it there in the back. Flip it back, fluff up all your ribbons, make sure everything looks nice, and then you can add your seashells. You will need at least 12 on top of every ribbon set. I also have some reddish uh, seashells here. They will coordinate beautifully with the sign and the ribbons. I'm going to add them here on the side and across from each other. And this is a great reef for summertime to use your seashell collection, uh, whatever uh, you or your children find on the beach. I think it's just, uh, just a beautiful keepsake or even a gift for someone special, don't you think? Let me know if you like to collect the seashells. I love to do it. Every way I travel, I bring some seashells. Free supplies after all, right? <laughs> I just wash them and boil them before I use them for my decorations. That way I know they're nice and clean. Some got caught up over here in the fish net. And I think this is gonna be it for this reef. Let me know how do you like it. And then I'm gonna have one more quick DIY for you.
for the last DIY, we are going to use this lighthouse sign from the Dollar Tree. I think it's so cute. And we're going to need a couple planks of wood that you can get at a Dollar Tree, some wood cubes, also any popsicle sticks, and a set of lights. I got old Christmas lights here. As you can see, the sign is made out of planks, uh, loosely connected with a ribbon. We want to get rid of those spaces in between, glue it together using a couple pieces of uh, wooden squares that I have in my pack from the Dollar Tree. You can also use popsicle sticks. Actually, I'm using one large one across to make a nice and sturdy piece. Next, we are going to make a pedestal using the wooden planks, one on top of the other. And yes, we are building a lighthouse. <laughs> I love the lighthouses, but they could be really pricey. I'm going to show you how to make it using Dollar Tree items. Look how sturdy already. And it's going to be under $5 for sure, or even less. And uh, just take a look at that. We are attaching it. And then we are going to use those little wooden cubes as reinforcement in the back. Next, we are going to glue the battery pack in the back, just like that and run the lights all the way up to the lighthouse, to the tower. And I picked the blue lights. I think they'll coordinate best here. Just adding a dab of hot glue at the plastic tip, being a gentle there, not to melt anything. Next, I remove the cover from one of the lights and I'm going to insert that bulb in the little hole at the top of the tower. And let me just glue that cable to the side. And then I just bundle up the remaining lights because I don't think I need them. And I'm going to use the tape to keep them across there in the back, just hidden, just like so. Are you ready for the reveal? Close your eyes. No peeking. Let me turn this thing around. Ta -da! Isn't that the cutest thing ever? Oh my goodness. All Dollar Tree. Let me just finish off this base. I decide to paint it black. Also add some of these uh, beautiful black stones that I found at a Dollar Tree. I arrange them at the base and I think they add so much charm. And here's the look at the final result. I hope you did. I'm having so much fun here sharing with you as usual. Please, if you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead, hit the little red button. That way you never miss any of my videos. And thank you so much for watching, okay? See you next time. Take care, bye-bye.